Well, hey there, Aletheia Church. Hope that you guys are doing well. I know it's been a few weeks since uh, I've done one of these, and but I uh, hope that you are enjoying your time in gospel community. And I'm just going to spend the next few minutes recapping my sermon uh, from Joshua 22 uh, this past Sunday that I had entitled Peace and Unity uh, Within a Climate of Tribalism. And one of the things I w- pointed out in my introduction was just that I, I felt like we live in a season and time where uh, really, especially within politics, but really anywhere, we are increasingly polarized as people. And the church in particular tends to be a place that we see that. Uh, but the question I kind of posed to us was, is that what God would have for us. Uh, is, is that what God wants? Does he want us to draw a line in the sand frequently on things that we may or may not agree with? Or does God ask us to uh, do something differently? And I think what we see in Joshua 22, in God's sovereignty, we see God have Israel faced with this very serious situation but he divinely leads them through conflict resolution and ultimately displays to us that he desires peace and unity amongst his people. And so a little bit of backdrop to the story that uh, you'll spend more time talking about uh, inside your groups was just that uh, we see uh, two and a half tribes of Israel after the promise has been fulfilled and they've taken the promised land, two and a half tribes of Israel are sent back to uh, the the western, excuse me, the eastern side of the Jordan River, and on that side, what we're going to see uh, is that they build an altar of imposing size, and when Israel sees this. Um, they blow a gasket, basically. <laughs> and uh, they gather and are ready to go to war. And before they, they head off to war, uh, it says that Phinehas and 10 of the um, tribe leaders basically go to these other uh, two and a half tribes and ask them, what are you doing? Uh, but they're fully prepared to go to war because they assume that Uh, These two and a half tribes have either turned from God or are building their own altar to God, which was something that was prohibited inside of Scripture. So once they get across and they uh, confront them about this altar, the other two and a half tribes respond by saying, nope, we're building this as a memorial and because we want to make sure that our people always remember God and remember our connection to you guys on the other side of the Jordan, um, on what God's faithfulness has done for us. And so this ends up being something that Israel is like, whoa, okay, sorry, we thought you were trying to build your own tabernacle or temple. And they back off and there is peace and reconciliation amongst the various tribes of Mm -hmm. Israel. And so kind of one of the things I pointed out uh, at the end of my sermon were three things that we could kind of pull away uh, that I think God teaches us on the importance of unity and how we can fight for it. And the first one was that assumptions are often dangerous and unhelpful, that God asks us to be slow to anger and to communicate in love when we go to those we disagree with, and lastly, uh, that we would earnestly desire peace. I want you guys to spend some time in a group tonight discussing those three points and how uh, you may be seeing those played out well in your life and how you may be seeing those not uh, playing out well in your life. And hopefully, big picture, I hope that you guys will be honest with one another and with yourself that there's anyone that you are in conflict with right now, especially another believer, uh, that you'll, you'll seriously consider repenting with them and seeking reconciliation because that is what God desires of his people. I'm praying that for you guys this week. I love you. I'm praying for you. Have a great week. Go and be the church.